This right here could be the perfect family wagon if you like sporty cars. And if you don't, Skoda offers an Octavia that isn't as sporty, but is still really, really good. And there's a liftback version as well. I'm gonna tell you all about the entire range in this review, so please do like and subscribe, and let's get to it. In Australia, there are two different grades of the Skoda Octavia available. The entry level model is called the Style, and it does have some pretty good pricing. The prices you see on your screen now are national driveaway prices for the entry level version. And yes, it is available as a liftback or sedan style model and as a station wagon as well. And it comes really well equipped for the money too. So you get some really good tech like matrix LED lights. So that can blank out sections of your high beam lights at nighttime so you don't blind and other drivers. You also get 18 inch alloy wheels. And on the inside, you get a 10 inch touchscreen media system with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and SatNav. And you also get digital instrumentation. There's climate control, air conditioning, keyless unlocking, and push button start. And it really does stack up as a value for money option. But if you want something that's maybe a bit more exciting and well, a bit more sporty looking as well, you might wanna check out this one here, which is the RS model. The price is is a fair bit higher if you want to get into this car, but um, you're getting a more powerful engine, you're getting a more dynamic drive experience, and you're getting a different look and feel as well. So you get the same matrix LED lights, but you get 19 inch alloy wheels. And on the inside, you still get cloth seat trim, but it's a beautiful diamond stitched RS sports theme with sports bucket seats in the front. Manual seat adjustment though, which is a little bit weird. Um, there's no seat heating either for this more expensive model. You can get that as part of an option pack. I'll explain that in the interior section, but you still get digital instrumentation, the same big screen as well, and a few really, really good features. But hey, um, there are some really, really good alternatives when it comes to the Skoda Octavia. Let's talk about them now. A really, really good alternative to the Skoda Octavia, particularly the RS model, is the Subaru WRX. Now, it's not as balls out boy racer as it used to be, but it is still a really nice car and there's a wagon and a sedan available and manual as well. So it has that trump card over the Skoda model here. So that could be why you choose the Subaru WRX. And in fact, I reckon it stacks up pretty well. Check out my review of it. You'll find the link in the description or the top of the screen there as well. Now, if you're considering a Skoda Octavia sedan in particular, then one other car you might want to have a look at is the Hyundai Sonata N-Line. Now, I did a review of the updated version very recently, link in the description or at the top of the screen there. It is a really nice car let down by a few annoying tech gremlins, which might get in the way of you enjoying that car as much as you probably should. But I still think it stacks up really well. Super duper powerful and fast too. And finally, you probably also want to take a look at the Mazda 6. Yep, it's very old now, but it still comes with a fantastic 2.5 litre turbo engine available, and there's still a sedan and wagon model too. So it could be a really good option for you, especially if you are maybe considering the lower grade version of the Octavia rather than this one. But hey, tell me which one you would pick in the comment section below, or if you think I've missed something, hit me up. The Octavia is about the same size as a midsize SUV in terms of nose to tail length, but it also has this low profile look to it. And I reckon it looks fantastic, especially in this mumba green color, which is a no cost option as well, um, which is surprising. I would have thought that they might charge more for this paint. But um, now one thing I really like about this car is it has these little sensors on the door handles. And so all you have to do is reach in behind there and the car will unlock for you. So that means that if you have your arms full of kids, you can basically just easily reach in without having to scramble for your key or reach for the front door as well. It's just a little thing that I really appreciate and you will too. And once you've had it, you won't want to live without it again. So trust me, it's very handy. All right, let's check out the boot space and see if it's handy too. Okay, let's talk about the wagon first and foremost. So this is a very, very practical option. If you are looking for a family hauler with heaps of boot space, this is what this car offers. There is 640 liters of cargo capacity in the boot, and it's got some really amazing features in here, including this clever mat, which is rubberized on one side, but carpet on the other. So if you are at the beach or you've got dogs or something like that, use the rubber side. 
Otherwise, you can use the carpet side. It's a bit more grippy, so things won't move around quite as much. And also, underneath the boot floor, you will find a space saver spare wheel, which is good to see. Now, there's also these clever little spots on the side where you can uh, store extra cargo or whatever you need to do. You've got some flip down hooks on the side for shopping bags and so forth. There's also a cargo net system so you can secure things in place so they don't move around while you're driving. You can fold the seats forward if you need to so you get a huge boot space in there. Just keep in mind that there is a brace uh, across the back of the boot section here so it's not necessarily flat but it is still a very practical space for the size of the car. It's really, really good. Oh, and if you're wondering about the lift back, I'll show you a picture of the boot space there, and it still offers 600 litres of cargo capacity. Brilliant! So, this one is the RS model, so it does get a few features that separate it from the entry-level grade in terms of the finishes, the treatments on the interior, and the wow factor involved in here. So, you do have this carbon look finish across the dashboard, you've got this lovely suede with reg stitching across the dash too, you've also got these great bucket seats which are very comfortable and also pretty adjustable, although as I mentioned before, manually adjustable. There is no uh, electric adjustment. Unless you choose the option pack that is available, um, it's five grand or so, but it does add things like heated front seats, heated outboard rear seats, electric seat adjustment, and you also get memory settings for the driver's seat too. Um, it does add a fair bit of value for money if that's what you want. It also means that you step up from this fabric finish to a part leatherish finish as well. So that might appeal to you on its own. Uh, it could be worth the money to you just like that. Um, and it also features a uh, lane keeping system that works in traffic jams as well, um, which you don't get as standard. So I don't think that really matters to me, but it might matter to you. All right, so let's talk about this interior more broadly. So apart from these brilliant seats, which are very comfortable, um, there is a fair amount of good stuff in this cabin. So you've got a wireless phone charger, you've got a couple of USB-C ports, you've got this dinky little shifter down here between the seats, which is very handy. Uh, it isn't in the way, which is good to see. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, but honestly, it's like two or three drives and then you, you are used to it. What you don't get used to as quickly is the fact that you've got a bank of buttons here for some of the functions that you need to do through the screen and thankfully there is a home bar at the bottom of the screen for your climate control stuff but there isn't a fan controller on that home bar so if you are like me and you are always playing with how fast the fan is um, then you have to go through the screen here to a screen here and then touch buttons on the screen to adjust the fan and like it gets a bit old pretty quick, um, but I don't know, maybe it's fine for you. Maybe you're just one of those people who always leaves their aircon on auto. Um, otherwise, uh, thankfully this time around, I've had absolutely no issues with Apple CarPlay in this car. In the past, in the Skoda Octavia that I had as a long-term vehicle when I was working at Cars Guide, um, I had heaps of problems with the technology in that car, uh, including CarPlay constantly dropping out, but also safety systems constantly dropping out. And I haven't had evidence of any of that over a week of testing with this car this time around and that's good news okay so otherwise the practicalities you've got a couple of cup holders here they're not the best size or shape for bigger coffees or bottles in particular but you do have bottle holders in the doors which are lined as well to stop things from moving around you've also got some clever Skoda stuff in the doors so you've got a little bin um, it's got no bag in it at the moment obviously uh, and in the driver's door as well just excuse the beeping you also get this umbrella which is handy, um, trust me, it's handy. Um, but otherwise, I think that the front seat experience is really good. Got a lovely steering wheel to hold on to, good digital instrumentation as well. And yeah, like I said, that screen takes a little bit of learning, but you'll get used to it, trust me. All right, let's see if it's family friendly in the back seat. Backseat experience is good in the back of the Octavia. In fact, it's great. This seat is set for my driving position at 182 centimeters or six foot. And look, I've got enough knee room, enough foot room, good head room. And in fact, I think three of me could fit across the back here. Thankfully, there aren't three of me in the world, but um, there's also some really good features in this car. Things like these little flip down headrests. So if you just wanna have a little sleep on the road, 
you can do that, very handy. Um, you've also got some really nice features when it comes to amenities in here. You've got mat pockets with little device pockets as well. You've also got a smaller storage tray in here, USB-C ports down here, directional air vents, Again, big bottle holders in the doors with the lining as well. And there's also a flip down armrest with cup holders. Or you could even maybe put some small bottles in there. And if you need it, you can also fold this section down and you'll have a ski port as well. So look, it's very, very practical, very, very thoughtful and very spacious. And if you have kids, there are isofix points in the window seats and three top tether points as well. There are also LED lights in the center here, but they point down towards the sides. So getting your little one in or out at nighttime shouldn't be too big of a task. Uh, although bending over to uh, reach in and out of this car, um, for those who have heavier small ones, um, might be a little bit taxing on your back. Trust me. Another thing I really like about the amenities in the back seat of this Skoda is you get these sun blinds included as standard. And that just makes for a nicer experience when you are driving in the hot summer sun, as we have been this week. Um, and they might be a little bit thin in direct sunlight, but at least they do help a little bit for little ones keeping out of the sun. When it comes to powertrain choices in the Skoda Octavia range in Australia, for 2024, there are two to choose from. So the entry level model, the Style, comes with a 1.4 litre turbocharged petrol engine with 110 kilowatts and 250 newton metres of torque. So look, that's gonna be enough for most people's needs. Honestly, it is a pretty perky little engine and surprisingly, it's actually quite fun. But if you consider yourself to be any kind of enthusiast, well, you have to choose this one here, which is the two liter EA888 turbocharged four cylinder engine. Yep, it is a fantastic engine that you've seen across a bunch of different models in the Volkswagen group. And it comes with 180 kilowatts and 370 Newton meters of torque. Again, with a seven speed dual clutch automatic transmission. And again, front wheel drive only. They get an all wheel drive version in other markets, but we miss out on it, sadly. However, it is still very, very quick. Not to 106.6 seconds for this car. And there's sporty drive modes as well. So let's go experience that together. I'm going to start off this drive experience in normal driving mode in the RS version of the Octavia, which is perfectly adequate for day-to-day -day driving. It means that you don't get quite as much um, zestiness from the powertrain, and nor is the steering heavy uh, to the point of feeling sporty. Um, it's just a fairly manageable, nice drive experience in normal driving mode. And it's also, I mean, relatively quiet. Uh, there's still quite a bit of road noise intrusion. You can still hear the engine, um, but if you wanna actually sort of notice the powertrain that you're using here, you put it into sport and instantly get a bit more warble coming through into the cabin. It sounds really good if you ask me. Um, it's almost a little bit WRX-ish in terms of the sound, but I really like it. I find it's quite enticing. And in sport mode, you do get heavier steering, more aggressive throttle response, and sharper gear shifts as well. Okay, we'll give it a bit of a blast just to show you what it's like. And it grips really nicely. It's in sport mode, so yeah, this is gonna be fast enough for enthusiasts, and lead foots alike. This is a fast and fun sporty wagon. You do get a little bit of scramble at the front axle when you are trying to get the power down. Um, look, maybe a better set of tires might improve that, even though these are pretty good tires, they're pretty grippy. Uh, but, you know, the enthusiast out there might wanna spend even more on their rubber. But honestly, it's so fun and so easy to drive quickly. It's also easy to drive slowly, which is <laughs> probably even better. And it does have a really nice ride uh, comfort to it. It is on the firm side of things. It does have sports suspension. So if you don't like a firmer ride, you know, you can feel the wheels hitting sharp edges, for instance, um, then the entry level version is probably going to be a better bet for you. It is a really nice engine. And honestly, it's gonna be enough for a lot of people out there. But I can understand if you want the RS, you want the sporty look, you want it to, be fast, yeah, this is the one to pick. 
I think the thing I love most about the Skoda Octavia RS in particular is that it does just have this beautiful balance of being a perfectly livable day-to-day -day family car, but also has that potency if you want it or need it. Um, you've just got so much grunt here and it is a fantastic engine, a really smooth powertrain. And look, yes, it does have a dual clutch automatic transmission, so it can feel a little bit hesitant at, at times, but it's actually not too bad. You get used to uh, the way that the transmission behaves at lower speeds. It's just when the engine start stop technology kicks in, that you do notice that it does have a bit more lag to it and can take a second or two before things restart and you're away but it's certainly better than some dual clutches of the past and better than some examples that are still on sale now in rival offerings from different brands. There's also paddle shifters if you wanna take matters into your own hands. That means that the transmission will be even snappier and it's just got really, really quick and clever shifts when you leave it to its own devices. But if you wanna take uh, control, you can. Look. I love this car and I reckon that you will too. If you are looking for a fast and fun family wagon, this could really easily be the right car for you. But also, if you are looking for just a more um, premium feeling but still manageable and attainable wagon or liftback model, the entry level version is probably going to tick the box for you. Trust me, it's really good as well. All right, let's talk about fuel consumption figures for the Skoda Octavia. Firstly, let's look at the style grade, so the entry level model. There is a slight difference between the liftback model and the wagon, but still, on paper, very, very fuel efficient. Not sure that you'll see that in real world driving all that often unless you're doing a lot of freeway stuff, but as it is, it's still very good. And if you're looking at the RS, well, the claimed figure is very impressive. You'll see it on your screen now. That's identical for both the sedan or liftback and the wagon model. Um, Although, I'm not so sure that you'll see that all that often because uh, this car eggs you on a little bit more. And so, if you're wondering what I've seen across a mix of different driving during my week with this car, which included um, some daycare drop-offs, some pickups, a couple of longer trips as well, you'll see the number on your screen now. And yes, there was an enthusiastic spurt here or there as well. The Skoda Octavia range was awarded the maximum 5-star ANCAP safety rating back in 2019, but it still comes as standard with a bunch of really good technology, including autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, there's adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assistance, and now they've just added back in across the entire Octavia range as standard blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert with braking as well. So it does stack up a little bit better now than it did last year. 2022 and 23 when there was the semiconductor shortage going on but there are still some things that maybe could be improved there's only a reversing camera as standard you don't get a surround view camera even as an option on this car and i mean it's not necessarily hard to see out of but still it is a family car so a surround view camera would be a welcome addition at least there is also a front and rear parking sensor system with a maneuver braking system so it can actually break the car if it thinks you might be going to run into something which is good and also, it comes with eight airbags as standard in the entry level model. So that includes dual front, a driver's knee, a front center airbag, front side airbags, and curtain airbags that reach to the second row. But if you choose the RS model, you get an extra two airbags in the back. So you get side airbag protection for rear seat occupants. Oh, and part of the 2024 upgrade to this car, it now also has a park assist system, so it can park itself semi-autonomously. And the driver's mirror now also has an auto dimming function. All of the Octavias also have an auto dimming interior mirror as well. Skoda Australia says it is serious about ownership prospects for its buyers, and so there is now a seven year unlimited kilometre warranty across the entire Skoda range, which does seem to put this in a much better position than some of its rivals, which have five years. And look, it seems to make it, well, a little bit more appealing for a long-term ownership prospect. Now, speaking of long-term ownership, um, if you wanna buy a service pack for this car, you can either buy a five year pack price on your screen now or a seven year pack and that means that basically you're saving hundreds of dollars 
over if you were to pay as you go for the servicing. Now the service intervals are 12 months and 15,000 kilometers, which is better than some other rivals, which offer shorter intervals between their servicing uh, requirements. And you also get up to nine years of roadside assistance included if you service your car with Skoda. So man, this stacks up well. It's hard to see why the Skoda Octavia RS won't be the right car for you if you are looking for a fast family wagon in particular. Look, the liftback is also really good and the entry level versions of the Octavia are also really good. So there's plenty of choice here. It is one of the best mid-size models on the market. And if you aren't sold on an SUV, then you should really, really go and check one of these out. And that seven year warranty, wow, that really just adds to the wow factor for this car. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. Would you buy a Skoda Octavia or would you buy something else? I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments section. And if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe and I'll see you later.